What's up guys, Velo here back again with another video. And today we're gonna be talking about creative mode, how to create completely random loadouts. And this is great for zone wars when you guys want each individual player to have a, a completely random loadout, completely different AR, shotgun, submachine gun, launchers, whatever it is that you're gonna do, snipers, etc. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. Now it looks complex, it is a little complex, um, but I'm gonna try to make this as simple as possible for you guys, because what a lot of people do is they create 16 different inventory settings um, things and they just drop the weapons that they want and they have to make 16 different classes that way. And it's, that's not really random, right? Yeah, it's random classes, but it's not random loadouts is what I'm trying to get at. All right, so there's a few things you're gonna need. You're obviously going to need player spawns. You guys already know that, I'm sure. And in this case, I have team one spawning here, team two spawning here. The main thing that you guys need to know is that all of the item, all of the player spawns need to be inside of the mutator zones, okay? Now, you can make these mutator zones as big and as wide as you want to. In this case, I just made it a single file line because that's where I put these uh, just for demonstration purposes. But what you can do with these mutator zones is you can adjust them so that the height and depth and width is all 100. And now you can see how big this mutator zone is basically the entire map you really just need it to be the area that people are spawning in a zone wars okay but in this case you can change all of them uh, to 100 by 100 by 100 and then that would guarantee that every person who spawns will be inside the mutator zone now what do these mutator zones do in fact i've made six of them um, you can actually do this same exact thing with only one however you cannot guarantee the order the weapons drop in your inventory. And that's the one thing that was bugging me. I wanted to make sure that my one slot was an assault rifle, my two slot was a shotgun, my three shot, uh, three slot was a submachine gun, and then so, so on and so forth. So um, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Each one of these mutators represents one slot in our inventory. So think of it, if we looked at it like this, slot one, slot two, slot three, four, five. Our sixth slot is going to be ammunition and materials, okay? Each mutator zone has a corresponding item grantor, okay? A corresponding item grantor and a corresponding trigger. Still with me? So this first item grantor is going to be slot one. You can't see it right now because it's kind of like a glitch in creative, but I've already gone ahead and dropped a variety of different assault rifles into this item grantor. But let me show what you guys have to do to make this work, all right? So when you place your item granters, you're gonna want this one to be enabled on game start so that it is working when the game starts. The person who's gonna receive the granted item is going to be the triggering player, okay? Just, just do that. The on grant action, you're gonna wanna leave this as keep all. Grant current item only, right? Grant condition, always. Grant on cycle, yes. This is important for random, okay? Grant on cycle, yes. Um, equip granted item, don't equip, don't worry about that, it doesn't really do anything. Remove item on grant, no. Give extra ammo, this is up to you. For me personally, I already have a slot for ammunition and materials, so I just put no. Cycle behavior, wrap, all right? Make sure that this isn't a stop, make sure that it's a wrap so it'll continue to just to randomly cycle your weapons. And then down here, you're going to cycle to random item when receiving from, okay? So what does that mean? When channel one, triggers then it is going to cycle to a random weapon that you have already put in this item grantor okay so we put let's say 20 assault rifles in here and when it receives a signal from channel one it will cycle to a random weapon and then what happens when there's a cycle it grants that weapon okay and who does it grant it to the triggering player all right now how are we going to activate? How are we gonna get this channel one to send a signal? Very good question. Let's go ahead and look over here at our first mutator zone. All the way down at the bottom, when a player enters this zone, transmit on channel one. Okay, so when a player enters this zone, they're gonna spawn into it, right? Then it sends a signal on channel one, which cycles the weapon to a random weapon, grants that weapon to the person that triggered it, which is that person who spawned inside the mutator zone. Okay, so keep that in mind right now. This, someone being in here, triggers this. Got it? 
The second one are going to be our shotguns, all of the same exact settings. Now, how do we drop items in here? All you're going to have to do is just pull up your creative um, selection here, click on weapons, uh, select a variety of assault rifles, and all you're going to do is equip them, whatever assault rifles that you want, and you can drop uh, a ton of them in here. I don't know if there is a cap, I haven't uh, explored that, but I've dropped a bunch, and you just make sure that there's plenty of space between your item granters, because sometimes you can accidentally spill into the other one. But in this case, we have a bunch of assault rifles in here. The shotguns are gonna be the exact same thing. The only thing I changed is this cycles to a random weapon when it's receiving from channel two. Okay, everybody with me? You can guess this mutator zone sends a signal, it transmits when a player enters the zone to channel two, okay? So that same player that spawned in the first one, you're gonna spawn in every single one. Every single player is spawning in every single mutator zone, okay? So every single player is going to send a signal to all of these channels. The third one is going to be our third slot. For me, I've just put a bunch of submachine guns in here. You can do what you guys want. And this is going to be receiving from channel three. It's going to cycle. Same thing over here. You guys can see when a player enters the zone, transmit on channel three. Fourth slot, you guys are getting an idea. And here I put a couple rocket launchers, a few different snipers. You can put um, like some grenades in here, maybe C4, things that you would carry in that slot or, or in that position. And this also is going to be cycling on channel four, channel four, channel five, channel five. And this one I just put like heels. I put some um, small potions, some slurp fish, some uh, floppers, um, I think some bandages. And I think just as a joke, I put a rusty can in here also. So like one person gets the rusty can. Kind of a funny joke. Um, and then last but not least, this one is going to, this one's the only one that's going to be different in terms of settings, okay? And this is the one that is going to have our ammunition and our materials. And how do I do that? Just come into creative, go under consumables. I select um, one of every single ammo, which it gives you uh, stacks of 100. And the shotgun, it gives you stacks of 20. And the rockets, it gives you one at a time. And then I also give 500 of each material. Now, of course, you guys can choose how much material you want to give. Uh, you could do 1,000 of each material. You could do 250, whatever you want to do. And all you do is drop these items, the ammo, into the item grantor, right? Which I've already done, but might as well add more. Why not? And it'll just kind of absorb all of that. I also put a coin, one coin, uh, just because I like the sound. When someone dies, it makes like a ding. You don't have to put the coin, but it's a nice little touch. Um, and that's it. The difference with this one, as opposed to all of the other ones, is that... Triggering player, yes. On grant action keep, all that's all the same, but we are not granting current item, right? We're not granting current item, we're granting all items. We don't want it to be a random item from here, like the weapons. We want all of this stuff that we put in here to go to every single player. So make sure grant is all items. Grant condition always. Grant on cycle, yes, you can do that. No, either one doesn't matter. Um, I just have it on yes. Give extra ammo, no. Cycle behavior wraps, uh, same thing. But the difference, instead of it being cycle to random, we just change it to grant item when receiving from. So it's going to grant everything. So make sure that you change that. And we're gonna do channel six in this case because it is our proverbial sixth slot, okay? Makes sense? And this one, as you can imagine, same exact thing. When a player enters this zone, transmit on six, and it'll give you this. All right, so the way that it is right now, if you were just to do the things that we just set up, um, you would get a random loadout, however, they wouldn't be in order that you want them to be in your inventory. And then you would have to like, you know, move your inventory around, which could be, you know, a little bit of a headache. And if you don't want to go to these levels to have them in order, that's fine. You can just do what we just did. In fact, you would only need one mutator zone and have uh, instead of and just have all of these be the same channel. But I don't think you guys want that. You guys came here because you want them to be in order and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Now there is a glitch right now in the game, and this is just a way to uh, bypass that. You wanna make sure that every single one of your mutator zones, if you go to your all options right here, they are not enabled at game start, okay? They're not working yet. They're all turned off when the game first starts, okay? Because for whatever reason, when they're on at the game start, it doesn't pick up that a player entered the zone. All right, so you want them to all be off, and then we want to turn them on all at the same time, okay? Or we want to turn them on in a sequence 
so that we receive each item in order. So you wanna make sure that this is no, and then down here, you're going to want to enable it, turn it on when it receives from a channel, okay? And then we wanna disable it uh, when we receive from a different channel. In this case, the disabling channel is gonna be 90 for all of them, okay? So you can make your disabling channel, the thing that's basically the, the, the light switch that turns it off is gonna be 90, okay? And if you wanna follow my channels, you can, but we want to turn the, this one off on at uh, 94. All right? and I'm going to explain why. So that's how we're going to do all of these. They are all disabled at game start. Right? And how do we turn them on? How are we starting them up? Well, we have a trigger over here. And this trigger is one second. All right, So it's a timer. You guys can get a timer. You're going to change the, second, the duration to one second. Auto start. So when the game starts, this timer is immediately going to start. One second later, it's going to finish. And when it finishes, make sure this says complete once and complete on timer end, yes. You want it to send a signal when complete transmit on channel, in this case, I'm doing channel 100, okay? So after one second, we're gonna transmit on channel 100. What happens there? It sends a signal over to our sequencer, which does exactly what I just did. What just happened with the sequencer? It is triggering all of these, it is hitting all of these triggers in a sequence, okay? Instead of hitting them all at one time, it's hitting 99, then 98, 97, 96, 95, 94, and then 90 um, is how I have it. Remember, 90 is the thing that turns everything off, the mutator zones, so that's at the end, all right? So after one second, I hope you guys are following this. After one second, the timer will send a signal telling the sequencer to start. And this is the settings on the sequencer. Looping, none. We want it to send one signal and one signal only. Tempo, I have it at 140. You guys can do whatever you want. You can copy this. Length, two. So what does that mean? The length is just how long this little track is, okay? I think it defaults at four. I made it two and did it like this because it thought it was a little more comp compact. Um, the height and width is totally up to you. Just leave it normal. The direction is just which direction this thing goes, you know. Um, and then zone visible during game. I put this as um, no, or you can put it as yes if you want. I'm leaving it yes for this demonstration so you guys can see it happen, okay? But you can hide that if you want to. And then the pulse direction forward, and then start the sequence when receiving from channel 100. Where did channel 100 come? After one second, this is transmitting on channel 100. Okay, so the game starts, the timer starts, the timer ends, it sigs the signal on channel 100, this receives a signal from channel 100, it hits the trigger 99, 98, 97, 96, 95, 94, and then 90, in that order, Brr, really fast. Okay, so what happens when this trigger 99 is hit by the sequencer. Well, let's go ahead and take a look. We come down, you can just see the things that I've changed. All it is is when this is triggered, transmit on channel 99, okay? So when the sequence hitter hits it, it'll transmit on 99. Now keep in mind, if you just use a default trigger, the way it comes out, uh, let me show you really quick. You just come down here to triggers, equip it, and then you, uh, right, wrong thing here. You throw this down, it's like flat like this. For whatever reason, uh, the sequencer will not trigger this. Okay, so what you have to do is come in here and then um, cut it or copy it up to you and then just rotate it. So what you're gonna do in this case is you're just gonna rotate the ax axis until it says roll and then just rotate it four times and then now you can place it just like that. And now the sequencer will hit it. So that's why they are all standing up like this. And same thing goes with this one. This one will just transmit on 20, uh, 98 and so forth. So now, <laughs> what happens when these are hit by the sequencer? This is kind of like the, the game Mousetrap. You guys remember that? We send a signal here, counts down from, why did this change to two? All right, counts down from one second, sends a signal to hit the sequencer. It hits 99, 98, 97, 95, 6, 95, 94, and 90. When 98 is hit, it triggers this mutator zone to turn on. Remember, it was off, okay? It was off before. So look at down here. We have enable when receiving from 99, okay? Disable when receiving from 90. So 99 is light switch on for inventory slot one. 90, 
light switch off. All right, so it's gonna be quick. It's just gonna turn on, turn off. And all, we only need it on for a split second to grant us the item that we have associated with this, which is channel one, which is our assault rifle slot. Follow? I hope you're following this. Um, you might have to watch this a couple times to understand. So 99 will be our assault rifles, 98 will be our shotguns, which you can see here. Enable when receiving from 98, disable at 90. 90 is always gonna be our, our mutator zone turn off, okay? Everything else is gonna change, and this is going to be 97 right here. It'll turn on, 96, 95, 94, and then they all turn off at 90, all right? Does that make sense? So, the reason you want them to turn off, okay? Why do we have the light switch off? Why do we have to turn the mutator zones off? It, you might not have to, but if for whatever reason somebody leaves the mutator zone, maybe the edge of the map is like just outside the mutator zone. If someone leaves the mutator zone and comes back in, they'll get a whole new loadout. It'll just do it again. So you just want to disable it. So have that light switch off and uh, it's just one more step. It doesn't take very long and then you're good to go. So now what will happen if we were to start the game, let's recap. Countdown timer for one second sends a signal to the sequencer to hit all of these triggers, accessing, hitting all of these mutator zones in a very quick sequence, giving us first the assault rifle, then the shotgun, then the submachine gun, then the fifth, fourth slot, which is going to be a sniper rifle, launcher, or throwable, the healing items, and then last but not least, it's going to grant us all of the material that we dropped in there, as well as the ammunition um, and the gold coin. Now, the one thing that you guys probably won't see is the ammunition unless you actually go into your My Island settings and under the user interface, uh, change it, I'm sorry, under the settings and change it from infinite resources, turn that off. Okay, make sure infinite ammo is off as well. And harvest style, uh, I would change this to battle royale if you're gonna allow people to harvest in your game. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter. Um, and that's about it. So now when we go ahead and start the game, you're gonna see timer starts, timer ends, sequencer, we get our weapons in order. And because I we've put extra mats um, in there, it just dropped those. It's because we've overloaded that. Let me just show you really quick how I can fix that. If you accidentally did this, end game, or say you wanna change um, the, the submachine guns. Maybe they, they reintroduced a weapon or they vaulted a weapon. This is a good way to change it. In this case, say I just put too many mats, I didn't wanna have that many mats. What I can do is come back in here, go to my materials and ammo um, item granter, customize it, and then down here, hit this cog wheel, and then we just clear the items. If you reset all, it'll reset all of the settings, including the triggers and all of that. Just clear the items out, okay? So now there's no items in here, and we can go back in here and select exactly which items. So maybe we only want 500 instead of what it was in there of each, and then do our ammo how we want it, any way that you want it, just the way you want it. And then, like I said, I, I like the touch of the single gold coin. So how I do that, is under my play menu. I just drop all this stuff in just like before. And then the single gold coin, all I do is uh, hit drop, move this over to one and hit drop. So the one gold coin goes in there. Now when I die, there'll be that little coin sound. I like it. All right, so now when we start the game, same thing will happen. We'll get, the or we'll get different items now in order. And there we go. Ah, I got the rusty can. But now you can see that I only have 500 of each um, material, okay? The last thing I would say is just make sure that all of the um, all of the mutator zones are wide enough to fit everybody in it because if one person is outside of one or two of them, they won't get that item slot, okay? And I wanna show you that this works. You only need one mutator zone um, per slot for all the players. You don't need to do this for each individual spawn point. I thought you did, you don't. Uh, let me go ahead and invite a friend in here and I'm gonna compare our loadouts and just show you that they are random for every single player. All right, so while we wait for him, what I'm gonna do, we already changed this one. Um, I'm just gonna change all these just to show you guys. Make sure that you're changing these to 100-100 uh, and just double check that every single spawn pad that you guys create is inside of every single mutator zone. So I'm just gonna head do this. I know it's time consuming and it's monotonous and you probably don't wanna watch it in a video, but I wanna be thorough so you guys understand what it is that we're doing here. Okay, so now you can see that 
all of this is in this blue area. So as long as all of your spawn pads are inside of this, then you're going to be good, okay? You'll be fine. So let's go ahead and get Johnny in the game. All right, so uh, Johnny, we're just gonna go ahead and spawn in and you're just gonna drop all of your weapons so we can compare, start the game. We've expanded all of the mutator zones to 100 by 100 by 100. Same thing's gonna happen. You see that countdown timer go to zero, boom, sequencer, and there's our weapons. And uh, drop your assault rifle. All right, you got the gray burst. You kind of got the short end of the stick there. What's your shotgun? Oh, we got the same shotgun, okay. Submachine gun? Ooh, what about your fourth slot? Same snipers, and then what did you get for? Oh, you got the rusty can. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and end the game and start again. Actually, I wanna show you guys what I meant about that, um, about the coin. Oh, the coin sound is it's just so satisfying. All right, and we're just gonna start the game right up again and we should get completely different loadouts. Now keep in mind, I didn't put a ton of uh, weapons in each slot, I just did this for demonstrations. If you guys want um, to be more random, you need to put more weapons in there. And that, what I mean by that is you can put four blue ARs so that uh, maybe they have a higher chance than the one gold scar. Does that make sense? So if you want, say you drop 20 assault rifles in the uh, assault rifle item grantor, if you want the, the gold scar to only be a 5% chance you get it, you need to only have one of them in there, all right? But if you want the blue assault rifle to be a 50% chance you get it, then you need 10 of them in there, 10 of them, okay? So you don't have to put that many if you don't want to, but um, don't just put one of every single uh, color, all right? So what did you get? What's your assault rifle? Ooh, we tied. What do you get for the shotguns? Okay, submachine gun. Ah, you got me there. And then, oh, you got the rockets. I got minis. You got the can again. Uh, so awesome. All right, guys. Well, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, leave a comment down below. If you have any other questions, let me know. The only other thing that I like to add for each um, spawn point is I do put a barrier up around each player. Uh, that way, for the first five seconds, it doesn't, you know, you don't die. And what I actually end up doing is just setting another trigger, but it counts down from five. Uh, another timer counts down from five and then that barrier falls. So. All right, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Johnny, thank you. If you did enjoy this video, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video.